Hi everyone, this is Johan Mal, it's Senior Program Manager with Microsoft, part of the CXP security team, and I'm here today to give you an overview of ATA deployment in 10 minutes. Let's start with a quick introduction. And first of all, what is ATA? ATA helps you detect attacks on your Active Directory on-prem environment. You can think of it as a fire alarm for Active Directory. It will identify known attacks, such as pass the ticket, pass the hash, golden ticket, but it will also detect unknown attacks thanks to its machine learning engine. It will be able to detect unusual behavior and detect potential attacks. Today we'll do a quick deployment overview covering three main stages, the design, before you actually deploy ATA, then how to deploy an ATA center, and how to deploy an ATA gateway. Before we get started with this, we'll have a quick overview of ATA topology. As you can see in the middle of this picture, there is an ATA center. That center will receive data from the gateway. The gateway are capturing the actual data required by ATA, which is a few event log, but most importantly, the network traffic going to and from the domain controllers. You can have a standalone gateway that will get the traffic through port mirroring, or you can have a lightweight gateway that will be installed directly from on the domain controller and will gather the local traffic. And here is what we're planning to demo today. We'll start with a quick overview of the sizing tool, making sure that we understand how to properly size uh, advanced threat analytics. Then we'll review how to install the ATA center, how to obtain the gateway package, and how to finally deploy it, and then how to configure your ATA center installation. The first thing you want to do when you plan on deploying ATA is download the ATA sizing tool. You can find it at aka.ms slash ATA sizing tool. You have to start it, run it for 24 hours, and after those 24 hours you will get this beautiful Excel spreadsheet as an output. It will give you an idea of how many packets per second your domain controllers are receiving. This is what we actually use to size ATA. Scrolling a little bit to the right, you can see that directly on the spreadsheet you have the hardware recommendation for the ATA center. Going back to the left on the column that you can see letter F here, you have the number of packets per second for each domain controller. Based on that, you're able to assess whether or not your domain controllers can support the lightweight gateway or not. And if they do, what kind of hardware requirements uh, are recommended here? Now that we have understood the basics of sizing and we have made sure that our environment is properly sized, let's start uh, our lab and get the installation started. So here we downloaded ATA, mounted it as a CD, and we'll just start the installation. The process is fairly straightforward. You have to start all the settings that are required. Here the language for a start, then click Next. Accept the license agreement, just like in any other Microsoft software. Here you're recommended to actually uh, enable um, update verifications. This is not automatic update, this is actually update check. So you will always have an opportunity to decide when the updates are made to ATA. Next screen, you're asked to choose the installation path and the database path. We strongly recommend that you move the database path to a separate drive so that you avoid filling out your system drive. The second thing you have to choose here is the SSL certificate for your ATA center. Obviously for a test environment, it's perfectly fine to use a self-signed certificate, but when you move to production, it is definitely better to choose a CA issued certificate. When you're ready, you can click install. Then the ATA installation wizard will start preparing your environment, installing the ATA database, which is running on MongoDB, and finally, install the ATA center software. After the setup is complete, click launch, and it will start the web browser to run the ATA console. As we chose self site certificate, here we have to accept that warning. And so here is your 
welcome screen to your ATA console with the first three steps you need to take. The first one being providing a username and password to connect to the Active Directory Forest. That user simply needs to be uh, a domain user, no special rights, no administration privileges, just uh, a simple user that you create and provide password and domain. You can click text, Test Connection just to make sure that it works. And once you have validated that it is perfectly working, you can save your settings. Then the next step is to download your gateway setup package. To do this, you can click on the download gateway setup link on the top of the window and you will be directed directly to the gateway management page. On this page, you will be able to download the package. And here, simply click on gateway setup to be able to choose a location to where to download that package. To make things simpler, we're going to save that package to a network share. This will give us access from all the gateways and lightweight gateways that we'd like to deploy, and this will make our deployment much faster and easier. Then we move to the second part of our lab, which is installing and configuring the gateway. So here we decided to install a lightweight gateway on a domain controller. So we connect to the domain controller, we go to the share where we actually saved the file, and we're going to run the setup. As you can see, the file comes as a zip format, so we have to extract it. There are two files in that zip. The first one is the actual setup, and the second is a response file with the JSON format, and it will contain all the information that are very specific to your environment. If you ever change something about your environment, uh, such as the ATA IP address or the certificate, you will need to re-download the gateway, as the JSON file will have changed. Then simply click on the setup, and run the wizard. Again, the wizard is very straightforward, and the first thing you have to do here, just like previously, is to select your language. When you're ready, you can click Next, and then it will confirm the type of gateway deployment that you are conducting. It will not let you choose, it will just confirm. If you're running on a, light, on a domain controller, it will be a lightweight gateway, just like here. If you're running on a standalone machine, it will be a full gateway. Just take time to acknowledge this, and then click Next. The last setting you have to choose is the path for the installation. Once you're ready, you can just click Install, and the ATA Gateway will start deploying. Once the installation is complete, you can go back to your ATA console, and you will notice that the domain controller registered as a lightweight gateway. Because it's a lightweight gateway, you need to configure one last setting, and it's making it a domain synchronizer candidate. This will allow ATA to synchronize all your entities, users, computers, and groups to make sure that it has a complete view of your Active Directory. Please note that this is done by default on a full gateway, but needs to be done manually in a lightweight gateway. Once this is complete, you can rerun that process for all the gateways, whether the lightweight or full gateways in your environment. In summary, we have now deployed ATA, we have installed a lightweight gateway, we have configured the center, all you need to do is the post-deployment tasks, such as configuring some of the additional settings in ATA, set up notification, and of course, testing simple detections or even advanced pen testing. Finally, don't forget to use our additional resources. They will help you make your deployment much easier. Also, do not forget to join our CXP community. This will give you access to technical preview. This will help you uh, speak to our engineering team and hopefully influence the product directly. Thank you all for listening and looking forward to our next microlearning video.